there's nothing to fear now, for I am saved you. So when I fly, I'll fly on my knees, with my hands and take high. Oh God, I'll be long to you, and every fear I lay at your feet, I'll sing through the You are for me, who can be against me? For Jesus says nothing impossible for you. When all I see are the ashes, you see the beauty. I see is a cross, God, you see it, yes, Jesus, Lord. So when I fight, I fight on my knees, with my hands lifted high, oh, God, I belong to you, and every fear I lay at your feet. church this morning. My name is Chris. I'm one of the pastors here. Um, and if you're new with us, we're super excited that you're here. I'm, st I'm stepping on your toes, but well, wait a second. Um, because we have a special worship service happening today in which I'm not preaching, but instead we're going to spend our time together in prayer. And we have a prayer sheet this morning. And so if you don't have one of these, um, would you raise your hand? And we've got some people who are going to come around and make sure that everybody has uh, has one, and you don't have to share if you don't want to. So, uh, having said that, why do we gather? We gather because we're learning to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. We're learning to love our neighbor as ourself. We're going to try and work on understanding who our God is so that we can share the love of Christ um, in this beautiful place we live. Amen? Some of you. Okay, so we've got some announcements this morning. Yes, lots of announcements, so buckle up. <laughs> First thing is welcome. If you are new here, we'd love to get to know you. We have a QR code you can scan there, or it's on the back of your bulletin. And if you do end up scanning it and filling out our Connect card, stop by our welcome window because we have a little gift for you. And then also, for those of you watching online, welcome. Thank you for tuning in. Okay, deep breath. Buckle up, guys. We have a lot. <laughs> First thing is our women's Bible studies are restarting. Uh, the Tuesday evening one is starting at January 9th at 6.30, and then the Thursday morning one is restarting January 11th at 9. And that one is food, so take your pick. Maybe the food one. I don't know. Um, anyway, speaking of food, our men's ministry breakfast is happening this Saturday, January 13th, 8 a.m. in the Mount Shasta Room. So if you're a man... I want to see you here. I won't see you here. I won't be here. I'm not a man. But if you're a man, come here. Come eat breakfast. 
Uh, and then also that day, uh, at about 10 a.m., we are going to do a youth recycling and movie day. We're going to, like, bag a bunch of cans and then end it with a movie. It's going to be great. And then January 19th, let's see, that's a Friday night, I think. We are doing a board game night at 5 p.m. It's going to go to 9, and we're doing a soup potluck. Make a soup, bring it, your favorite soup. It's going to be great, great fellowship opportunity. And then Sunday the 21st is our membership class. It's going to be at 9 a.m. If you're interested about church membership, Pastor Chris is going to be teaching it. You'll get, the, the, get to learn all about it. It's going to be great. So if you're interested, join us January 21st. And then we're almost there, guys. <laughs> January 28th, the following Sunday, we are doing a What Are You Famous For potluck. So the idea is you bring, like, the dish that, like, you're known for. David, bring something you're known for. I don't know. Something good. So everyone bring, like, that dish. And it's, it's, it's going to be a competition. So bring, bring your best. And then our last announcement is we need a you kids boys group helper. We do not need a you kids hey. boys helper. Psych. Never mind. Anyway, prayer. There, there we go. Answer to prayer. So that's all my announcements. I'll hand it back to Pastor Chris. Excellent. So at this time, we're going to uh, take up our tithes and offerings and uh, start our time in prayer with some prayer. And so I'm going to do that and then... I'll hand it off to Tori. So um, here we go. Lord, we thank you for what you're doing in our midst. We thank you for the way you're generous toward us in all ways. We thank you that we um, are here together to worship you, and we ask that you would, be fa you would be faithful to us and help us to be faithful to you. As we um, give unto you of our tithes and offerings, we pray that you bless the money that's given for the work of your kingdom here in this valley and around the world. And we trust in you. We pray in Jesus' name. So Tori's going to kick off our prayer service. Join me in prayer. Father, I thank you for the children of this church. And I thank you how you're using them to go out and reach the world and the generation that they will become. I pray for everyone who serves with the children of our church, that you would bless them and strengthen them. I pray for the youth, that in this generation we would see them rise up strong and in power, I pray for the college students, both at KCC and OIT, that you would bless them, Father. I pray that you would strengthen them in their faith and help them to know you truly, that their identity will be anchored in you and that they would grow to be a light for this community. I pray for all the youth, children, and college age in our church and beyond within the basin, that you would just strengthen them, draw them close to you, and help them grow and develop. We thank you for what you're doing in this church, what you're doing in this community, and what you're going to do in this country. I thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, amen. Are dismissed. The kids are dismissed. Nothing is 
turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can. You turn graves into gardens. You turn bones into armies. You turn seas into highways. You're the only one who can. You turn mourning to dancing. You give beauty to ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can. You turn graves into gardens. You turn bones into armies. You turn seas into highways. You're the only one who can. Stood in awe, for the 
souls of all who come to the Father are restored. And the church of Christ was born, and the Spirit lit the flame. Now this gospel truth of the Lord shall not hear and shall not faint. By His blood and by His name, in His freedom of life.
There we go. There we go. This is a, an unusual service, and I recognize that. And the way this is going to happen is someone from this microphone will be praying, and people from that microphone will either be leaving or coming, and we're going to continue to move back and forth in prayer. I want to encourage you to participate. And how you participate is entirely up to you. You can participate by listening. You can participate with your eyes closed or open. You can participate by standing. If you feel uncomfortable standing, you can move to one of the back places where no one else can see you. You can pray with your hands lifted high like David does in the Psalms. You can pray on your knees. You can pray sitting comfortably, but participate. I've given, uh, I've given you a prayer sheet. On that sheet, it has some of the things that we'll be praying for, not all of them. And you can follow along. You can see what uh, people are praying for, and then you can take it home and put it on your fridge and remember to be in prayer about these things. So without any further ado, I'm going to begin with a passage of scripture from the Psalms 105. And this is what it says. Boast about his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord. And he gives he, the strength he gives. Seek his presence continually. Recall the miraculous deeds he performed. His mighty acts and the judgments he decreed. O children of Abraham, God's servant your descendant of Jacob, God's chosen ones. He is the Lord our God. He carries out judgment throughout the earth. He always remembers his covenantal decree, this promise he has made to a thousand generations. Let's begin in prayer. Lord, we come to you with humility, asking for you to be here with us, that you should condescend to come among people is mind-boggling. You are God above, the Lord who created all that exists. Your power is beyond reckoning, your love deeper than our oceans. You have come among us and we give you thanks and praise. I pray that you would show up in this time. Earlier we sang about the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God, the Holy Spirit, we invite you to come and be among us. I pray this morning that you would be at work, that your hand would be upon us, that your spirit would move among your people, that we would sense your presence with us, and that you would be glorified as we seek you. We know we need your help in all things, from, from the very great things in our lives that are plaguing our minds even now to the simplest of things like the air we breathe and we recognize we need you so we ask that you be with us that you fill us that you open our hearts and that you would help us to reach toward you to touch you oh god to give you glory and praise as you deserve we love you we, we know that you will be with us for you are faithful to us. We pray this now in Jesus' name. Lord, I want to pray today for uh, evangelism in this community. Father God, we are gathered here this morning to worship you. As part of that worship, I lift up each one of us in this prayer. Each one of us has family members, neighbors, and friends that do not have the faith in the Lord and Savior as we do. They're, we grieve for the lost. My prayer today is for each person here to find boldness and strength and you to share with those non-believers. Acts 4.29 tells us where Peter and John were praying, now Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak with your word with great boldness. And in Acts 28, 31, Paul says, we are told he proclaimed the kingdom of God and taught about the Lord Jesus Christ with all boldness and without hindrance. 
Give each one of us here at United opportunities to be a beacon of light to the lost in our lives. I pray for those lost individuals to have receptive hearts that will respond to our message of hope. Lord, I pray for revival here in Klamath and around the world. Revelations 3.20 states, Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. Christ is always knocking at the door. May the people of United carry that message of love to those lost. May we build relationships of love and trust with those around us so that when we put in the salt seasoned with your love, that it will not be combative. My heart cries out, especially for some of my own grandchildren that are lost in today's world. As I grieve and pray for them, I ask that people just like those sitting out in the chairs in front of me will interact in their lives in a way that they see Jesus and respond to the hope we have. Eternal life with Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Each one of us have been called to be prepared to share our faith. 1 Peter 3.15 says, But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. I pray that those in our sphere of influence will see how we live our lives and ask about our faith in Jesus Christ. To close today, my prayer is that each one of us here today will strive to live our lives for you, Lord, and take every opportunity to share the good news of Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. And as we move our prayer towards our community, Lord, I ask that you individually quiet our minds from the distractions of our world and that we are able to commune with you, Lord, and and pray with an open heart, an open mind, um, and really speak with you and hear your leading with our community. I am drawn to Christ's words in Matthew 22, where he says, the greatest command is to love you, our Lord, with our hearts and minds, our soul, and our neighbors, ourself. And Christ further answers who our neighbor is with the Good Samaritan, um, that it's that person that we come across in need, that we physically are in touch with. And as humanity in our community, all of us are in need, whether it's a physical need, a mental need, a health need. Um, we're all in need, it's a human condition. But in our first world, who is our neighbor? Who do we come in contact? We come in contact via phone and cell phone, uh, the house across the street. We come in contact through work and through school, through the grocery store, through the person driving next to us, cutting us off, Lord. And I just pray for these neighbors that you've put into our lives individually as we're thinking about all these people that we're in contact with in our community and as our neighbors just going to give us all just a moment to quietly pray for whomever comes to our heart. Lord, we're also joined together here as a community, physically um, together in this church, uh, United Preach Evangelical. And, and as a church, we have our own community neighbors. Um, physically, the Mills community is just right down the street, and they're physically there, and that's part of our vision is to, to reach out and meet the needs of that community. And there's other other parts of this community that we're very involved with, whether it's the IYS or the Gospel Mission or United Christian Ministries or Pregnancy Hope Center um, and so many others, the City Fast City Serve that we worked through this last year and are continuing to work to reach our community. Um, and there's even non-Christian organizations that people within this church body 
for serving you and seeking to bless our community through you. I'm just going to put another few moments of prayer for those community groups that we're involved with in those sections that we are have on our hearts. In closing of our prayer for our community, I'd like to close with Galatians 5, 13 through 14. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love, for the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. Dear Lord, we are taught that there is no authority except by God's appointment, and the authorities that exist have been instituted by him. Therefore, I pray for the world's leadership, especially that you would lead them by your Holy Spirit and bring peace. Except by your holy intervention, we stand on the brink of serious escalations of war throughout the world and the terrible consequences that might occur. Please pray with me for the leadership in this world. We pray, Lord, for the government and leadership of the United States. We pray especially for unity in our nation as you have said, there is no difference between Greeks and Jews, circumcised and uncircumcised, foreigners, slaves, or free people. We pray for kindness and tolerance and that our leaders would seize upon these premises and create a government that honors your precepts. Please pray for our government. We pray for the leadership in Oregon, that it would be cohesive and looking towards the well-being of its citizens, impartial, wise, and fair. We pray that leaders with their hearts sensitive to you would step forward to serve and seek your wisdom in their deliberations. Please pray for our government in Oregon. We pray for our local government that it will uphold the right to free religious worship, be wise in the distribution of limited resources such as water and energy, and prudent in fiscal matters. Again, we pray for godly people to step forward and serve in our community and government. Please pray for our local government. Finally, Lord, we pray for the leadership of our church, the board and the pastors. We are your bride, Lord, and our commission is to honor you. Bring forth men who are willing to serve on the board and men and women who are willing to serve as deacons and deaconesses. Give our congregation a heart to accept change that, we, that are aimed at expanding your kingdom and teachings. Let us be truly united as we go forward this coming year. 
we bow down before you with gratitude. Please pray for the leadership in our church. Thank you, Lord, for your loving hand. Thank you that you are overseeing all things, Lord. Not only the temporal, but the entire universe and the entire expanse of time. We trust, Lord, in your decision making. And we just pray that we can come beside you and implement your will. We pray this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Before we pray for the persecuted church, I'd like to just share, share some context and then a couple of relevant passages from scripture uh, regarding the persecuted church. Around the world, many Christians are persecuted, imprisoned, uh, abducted, even killed for their faith. Currently, there are over 300 million people facing persecution daily. And just as a point of reference, the population of the US is currently about 340 million. So put that in context. So now some related scripture. 1 Peter 4, 12 through 15. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice insofar as you share Christ's sufferings, that you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed because the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. Luke 6, 27 to 31. But I say to you who hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray the, for those who abuse you. To one who strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from the one who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. Give to everyone who begs from you, and from the one who takes away your goods, do not demand them back. And as you wish that others would do to you, do so to them. Now let's pray. For the protection of those experiencing active persecution. Lord, you have warned us through your son, Jesus Christ, that those who follow him may be oppressed and abused because of their faith. We pray for all those who are experiencing this type of persecution. You are a protector and provider for all those who follow you. Please be present for those who are in danger. Please protect and uphold them by your righteous hand. For the provision of resources. Father, we know that you have the ability and the authority to give whatever we ask for in Jesus' name. We intercede for our brothers and sisters that are prevented from accessing food, money, Bibles, and other resources. May they see you as the God who provides. Show them an increase in your grace and supply for all their needs so that they may be strengthened to endure. For those in prison, God, you are near to the lonely and to those being imprisoned for their faith. Thank you for their strength and their courage. As Paul knew, may they know that despite their current reality, you are using all things to advance your kingdom and are leading them into an inheritance that will never spoil or fade. Lord, have mercy. Give them the courage to remain faithful to you and be ever present in their times of trouble. For those that are alone, Father, you are the God of all comfort. You promise that you will never leave or forsake anyone that knows you. We pray now for our brothers and sisters that have been separated from their friends and family for your namesake. Please be near to them and help them experience your powerful comfort and compassion. Amen. God, we thank you <clears throat> that you are a God who desires to be known and who speaks to us. Thank you for your word and for the free access that we have to it. We pray now for the millions of people who still don't have access to your word. Um, we want to see all people encounter Jesus through scripture 
in a language and a format they can clearly understand. We praise you that we are seeing you creatively work in new ways to raise up your global church to bring your word to communities without it. We praise you for the rapid and unprecedented acceleration of Bible translation over the past few years, expanding in ways we've never seen before in the history of the work. We praise you for the incredible increase in local in ownership in starting and continuing translation projects. We praise you for the discipleship that is taking place through the translation process itself and for the hearts that are being transformed through access to your word for the first time. We praise you for the collaboration and strategic planning that has been happening in Nigeria, where there are the most languages, allowing for 88 of the remaining 250 languages in the country to begin translation projects, um, and for the additional 40 that will soon start. We praise you for the Anthem Reka cluster project in is India, which in collaboration with national partner organizations is doing language research in scripture in groups without scripture with the expectation that more than 90 translation projects will be started in the next year through this work. God, we praise you for the Juan Bell project in Papua New Guinea, which is addressing Bible translation needs in 80 languages through oral Bible translation. Of these languages, 77 will receive scripture for the very first time. We praise you that local churches and communities are taking ownership of this work. God, we praise you for the many other places where the work of Bible translation is moving forward. We pray that the gospel will take root, transforming lives for your glory and for the good of your people. God, we also pray for the places that have not yet had translation projects started in their language. Um, we pray for places that have a local church, that the church would not only desire scripture in a language and a format that they can clearly understand, but that they would desire significant involvement in the work. God, we pray for collaboration and for unity as Bible translation agencies, church denominations, and local leaders and others work together to create strategies and plans to reach their communities with scripture. We pray for open doors at both the local and the national level. We pray that you would go before your church and open doors in the last remaining languages as you deem best. These are in difficult places to access, whether because of geographical, political, religious, or ideological barriers. But God, nothing is too hard for you. We ask you to make way for your light to break through the long-standing darkness in these places, even where the resistance is so strong. God, we pray for partners in prayer, in funding, in strategy and execution, in the work of translation itself, in scripture engagement, and more. We ask them to come together with a single focus to see your name made known among the nations. And God, um, Jesus, you said to pray for the God of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest fields. And so we pray for that. Um, we know that Revelation 7, 9 through 10 promises a day when every nation and tribe and people and language will stand before the throne worshiping you. And God, we thank you that that picture is becoming a reality, um, but the work isn't done yet. And God, we, we pray that you would provide what is needed for the rest to be done. May we all be faithful to the roles that you've called us to, working toward that day when all people will worship you in a language and a format they clearly understand. And God, we know that you can do immeasurably more than we ask or imagine in making your name known among the nations for your glory. So my topic is on world evangelism, and I have to tell you that when I wake up in the morning, the first thing I really think about is uh, I'm awake uh, more than I do world evangelism. It's hard to wrap our minds. I know the ones that laughed are the ones that are probably my age, I imagine. It's hard to uh, imagine uh, world evangelism is and thinking about all the different countries in the world. Um, and I'm glad that Pastor uh, Chris has given me this one, but <clears throat> I think what I want to do this morning uh, in the short time that I have is just to, uh, several of you, wrap your mind around 
world evangelism outside of Klamath Falls and think about the various countries that are in such need of the gospel. Uh, I know we've all heard stories, amazing stories, that have been happening in the Muslim world for sure. Uh, appearances of uh, visions of Jesus showing up and I know of one that came to know the Lord through that vision. But there are others. Uh, we have persecuted churches all over the country, all over the world, um, thinking of China, um, South Korea or North Korea, others that are really, really suffering. It's uh, a cost to the believer to share the gospel, a cost that costs them their lives. And so I want us to keep in, in mind those kinds of things. So as we go to prayer, silent prayer, will some of you, if not all of you, pick a, a country, whether it be Vietnam, whether it be China, Russia, any of those countries, take a specific country and pray for that country, will you? And then I'll close in prayer. Let's pray. Lord, when I woke up this morning, I thought about John 3.16, a passage that's so simple but cost someone their life. It's a simple gospel, but it is a gospel that saves people. Father, I pray that uh, around the world that believers will be bold and courageous to share the gospel with someone, Father, about John 3.16. Lord, I pray that uh, the gospel, when given to someone, will pierce the conscience, causing the unbeliever to realize that one day they will face an angry God because they rejected the one thing that would give them eternal life. It's a sobering thought, but it's one, Father, that the unbeliever will face one day. And so I pray, Father, that your light will dispel the darkness to whomever the gospel is shared with. And I pray, Father, that we will see remarkable results because people are concerned about sharing your word with that unbeliever. I pray in Christ's name. Amen. Is it on? Okay. And Jesus came to them and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. We all have been called to be missionaries to uh, the people that God puts in front of us. Uh, our neighbors, our family, the person you see at the grocery line, grocery line that uh, uh, you can interact with and talk with. This morning, my focus is to just encourage you to do that, but 
to pray for those who have made missionaries, being a missionary and missions, their life's work and are full time in the field uh, trying to reach, as we've heard from others this morning already, trying to reach people who do not know anything about Christ. Or in some cases, we have missionaries that are uh, trying to reach people who know but have rejected. I'm grateful to serve in this congregation who over the years has greatly shown their uh, bent toward and their support for the mission, missionaries who are full-time missionaries in the field, locally or uh, abroad, in places where the gospel is desperately needed. This morning, my emphasis is on the uh, long-term total focus of missionaries in the field. Again, that can be here or abroad. Father, uh, as these folks commit their life to doing your work, uh, it is our pleasure to uh, work with them and to be part of their support system. And again, I am grateful for this congregation for that very purpose. Father, I thank you for uh, providing for this congregation and for providing the grace and the desire to uh, join in ministry with each of our missionaries. It's hard for us to understand if we're not out there in the field uh, the difficulties when that they encounter as they uh, uh, learn new languages as they learn new uh, ways to live in different countries. That, uh, Father, the adjustment, we're told the adjustment to that is probably the most uh, difficult part of their uh, work. So we pray, Lord, that you would Strengthen, as we know you do. We pray that you would uh, encourage those in the field, help us to be encouragers for them. Father, we recognize that apart from you, this could not happen at all. We have witnessed over the years through the reports from missionaries we've supported, through other uh, others that have been in the news, we've witnessed your miraculous intervention and your miraculous uh, solutions to the difficulties that they find themselves in. Father, we have missionaries that we support that uh, are in countries where it is actually uh, physically dangerous for them to uh, openly spread your gospel of truth and of love. We pray, Lord, for safety. We pray for uh, the courage and we pray, pray for the opportunity for them to live their life in that country, in those places, in a way that would speak loudly of your truth and that would 
encourage uh, fellowship with those in need. I pray your protection, Lord, for all of our missionaries as they're in the field. Father, we have this morning a list of the uh, 12 missionaries that this church is active, actively uh, working with. And again, it's just our privilege to do that. Other issues that they run into uh, that uh, we hear uh, uh, from the missionaries in their prayer requests uh, each week as we uh, single out a, a set of missionaries. Uh, uh, is the difficulty, again, in, in adjusting to uh, their surroundings of fitting in and of learning the language in such a way that uh, uh, it is productive and, and uh, not offensive in terms of, of uh, uh, insulting as they uh, interact with the folks. Father, thank you for our missionaries that are working in such extreme conditions. Thank you for those uh, who have been uh, forced out of the field and are uh, working from home, working from uh, here in the States. I pray that... Uh, their finance uh, support would would remain and would uh, uh, keep them solvent uh, to do their work. Thank you, Lord. We know that it's you that are providing all that through us and through others. As we look at the list of, of missionaries that we have, I'd just like to say that we have missionaries uh, uh, <clears throat> right here in the States. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, the Meskers, Alan and Diane, and the Munsons uh, are both in, in uh, excuse me, the Munsons <laughs> and Rebecca Cornelius are both in uh, universities here in the States, and they are working, trying to reach as many of our children who are in the universities as they can. And we know that as our children move out of the house and, and uh, begin their adult endeavors in the universities they are uh, tempted to and sometimes instructed to uh, leave their Christian faith or look at it as, as not being uh, uh, relevant at all. So Father, uh, though this is a in-state, in, -state, in uh, this country ministry, it is no less valuable. It's uh, a mission that really needs to happen here. And we thank you, Father, for those who are doing that. Father, we love you. It's our desire to serve you in every way we can. Again, we are grateful for those who step forward and um, commit their lives to serving you full time in reaching others. I pray for the people in this congregation, Lord, for ourselves, for uh, that we would keep you up front in our minds and that we would uh, watch for and ask for opportunity 
to minister to uh, those around us. I thank you for the organizations uh, here in town that make that their mission as well, that they uh, work because of you. The Hope Center and, of course, the missions, uh, uh, the gospel mission and, and others uh, that take their teachings and their working from you and take it seriously. Father, again, thank you for that. Thank you for being in our lives always. And we ask that uh, you would help us to remain faithful to you always, both on your mission field and on our support for those uh, who are making that sacrifice. In Jesus' name, amen. To let you know, there it is, um, that we will have some uh, board members uh, on, the, on either side of the auditorium at this time. If you would like to ask them to pray over you, that's um, something we'd like to be able to do for you today. Um, I also would like to talk a little bit about um, a difficult kind of prayer um, that we will be praying over in just a second. Um, it's a prayer for healing, and healing is a, is a tricky thing to pray for. And, and the reason is, um, why should I pray that I get healed and knowing that this other person with the same problem doesn't get healed? Like, how does God even decide between me and somebody else who gets healed and who doesn't? And and then there's this issue of, well, if I pray for healing, am I, am I putting all this hope in, in Jesus and God saying yes to me and healing me? And then um, what happens if he doesn't? I, I don't even know if I want to hope for healing. I was thinking about this and looking through the scriptures, and uh, I saw a couple that, that really jumped out at me. One is Jesus quoting Isaiah in Matthew 13, 15, and I found it fascinating because we don't usually think of prayer for healing uh, as, as something related to what we do. In fact, all of the prayers this morning have been about what God does, uh, but there is something to our hearts, and what Jesus says as he quotes Isaiah is, this people's heart has grown dull. With their ears, they can barely hear and their eyes they've closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and turn, and then I would heal them. I think about that because so many times I feel like I can barely hear, like I have my eyes closed that I'm not perceiving because of the distractions of, of the world. The other verse that jumped out to me of 2 Chronicles 7, 14 and 15, which you might have heard, God is talking to Solomon. He says, If my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn away from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. And then he says, Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayer that is made in this place. So let us pray for healing. But first let us pray for humility and repentance that we might seek God with our whole heart and mind and strength. Lord, we come to you today a people who are very imperfect. And we pray for your forgiveness we pray that you would show us if there be any way in us that we need to bring to you and repent of. If there is unconfessed sin in our hearts, in our lives, we pray that we would confess that to you, bring it to you. Maybe we need to confess to somebody else. Lord, we pray that you would help us to have the humility to recognize that, to acknowledge it, and that we would turn from to turn from sin, turn to you, to your face, that you might hear from heaven and forgive us 
and heal us. Lord, I pray for those who are, healing, who are hurting from physical affliction, those who have ailments or injuries. I know of many, some who aren't here this morning because of sickness. Lord, we pray for healing. We pray for full and complete recoveries. We pray for those whose ministries are hindered, whose, whose ability to build the kingdom is hindered by their physical ailment. Lord, we pray for those whose minds need healing. It is something we don't pray enough about. We always think about the physical, obvious, outwardly broken things that need healing. But there are so many minds that need to be transformed, that need to be conformed to Christ. Lord, we pray for those uh, whose hearts and minds are just not in a good place. And we pray for healing for them. I want to take a moment and open it up to you guys to think of however many people are in your heart and mind and take a moment to pray for healing for them right now. Lord, we thank you that you are able to heal, that you are able to do the miraculous. We also thank you that you have given us the capacity to help those who are hurting, to aid those who are suffering. We thank you for the medical technologies and the doctors and the medicines. We thank you for the counselors that, that can help with our emotions and our hearts and our minds. We thank you for, for those especially who are in those fields doing those things because they want to be like Christ. It's a Christ-like act to help people to heal. We pray for those in those fields because they see a lot of pain, and that's really tough. We pray that you would give them wisdom and discernment as they seek to heal those around them. And we thank you, Lord, that you are able. And we pray that you would get all the glory. In your name, amen. I'm really tall. There. It's, it's an awkward thing to ask somebody to, to pray for you. Um, and, and around the room, there are several board members. And, and if you want an individual to pray for you, um, you can look around and see these men who are standing there. And they'll be, they'll be willing to pray for you. If, if they can pray for you in this service, great. And if we're done and everything else is moving around and you haven't been prayed for and you want to be prayed for, go to them then. Um, if you don't know any of them, go talk to Pastor John or talk to myself. But we're here to pray for you guys. We're here to encourage you and bless you. And, and the Lord is at work in our midst. And, and it's my joy now to, so what we're, what we're doing now is I'm going to spend a minute and we're going to give thanks to God for what he's done. And then, um, and then we're going to worship him at, in, in, in the remembrance of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ through the taking of, of, of communion. And so that's the rest of our worship service. Um, but I want to read this from, from the 107th Psalm, and I'm going to skip around a little bit, but the 107th Psalm begins this way. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his loyal love endures. Let those delivered by the Lord speak out those whom he has delivered from the power of the enemy. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his loyal love and the amazing things he has done for people. 
for he has satisfied those who thirst, and those who hunger he has filled with food. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his loyal love, for, and for those, the amazing things that he has done for his people. For he shattered the bronze gates, and he hacked through iron bores, and they acted like fools in their rebellious ways, and suffered because of their sins. They lost their appetite for all food, and they draw near to the gates of death, but then they cry out to the Lord in their distress, and he delivers them from their troubles. He sent them an assuring word and healed them. He rescued them from pits where they were trapped. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his loyal love and for the amazing things he has done for his people. Let them present thank offerings and loudly proclaim what he has done. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his loyal love and for the amazing thing he has done for his people. Let them exalt him in the assembly of the people. Let them praise him in the place where the leaders preside. So we're going to pray and give thanks to the Lord. And I want you to be in mind as I begin to pray of things that you're specifically thankful for. And we're going to try to follow this passage a little bit. And I'm going to pray and then I'm going to stop and ask you all to speak out something for which you are thankful for. And it's going to be awkward, but you're going to do it anyway. So let's pray. Father in heaven, we are grateful we're grateful that you meet with us here. We're grateful that you come among us. We're grateful that you do things because of your great love for us. And we have so many things in our minds and in our hearts that, that we, we should be thankful for. We ought to be grateful for because you have done great things on our behalf. And so I want to stop now and I want to pray um, with these people whom you love and give thanks in specific for something. And so, church, what are you thankful for right now? Speak it out. Thank you, Jesus, for, for being in our midst and for loving us. Thank you for doing miraculous things. We, we give you thanks and praise together. We are your people humbly coming to you with gratitude in our hearts. We know that you are so good, that your love is so amazing, that you reassure us when we are doubt. We thank you for the faithfulness of the saints in this place, and we thank you for the prayers of the saints, even this morning, the, the people who have come and prayed and asked that you do miraculous things. Lord, we need you. And you are here. And so we love you and we worship you. And, and, and we celebrate together these things that you have done. We celebrate that you continue to be at work in the hearts and minds of people who don't know you. That you are doing work even now in the, in the hearts and minds of our friends and our neighbors and our family members who, who aren't serving you. And we pray that you continue to do that work. We thank you, Lord, for the work that you're doing in our midst, in the work that you're doing in the, in the leadership of this church, and, and that you're continuing to bless us and protect us, that we pray that you continue to do the work uh, around the globe with the missionaries we support and the countless missionaries we don't even know. We thank you so much that, that you're continuing to bring healing and restoration and hope, and so we give you praise and thanks. We honor you this morning, for you are good. We love you. You are good. Thank you for being in our midst this morning. And now uh, we're going to turn to worship you and remember the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who came and, and willingly did, laid down his life for us. And so um, I ask that the musicians come, and um, we're gonna we're gonna worship the Lord in that way. And so, um, I have a passage of scripture that I promptly lost because I was doing other things. Luke chapter twenty-two.
At the end of Jesus' life, of course, he gathered his disciples up in, in what we know of as the Last Supper, and, and he met with them, and he reassured them, and he encouraged them, and then he told them what to do. In Luke chapter 22 and verse 19, as, he had, um, as they had been eating together, it says, then, then the Lord took the bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup, and after they had eaten, he said, this cup has been poured out for you, and it is the new covenant in my blood. So the musicians are going to play, and the board members are going to come and stand in front of their uh, trays, and we're going to serve communion now, and you guys are all going to get up and stretch a little bit, which I suspect you probably need to do, and take hold of the elements, and then we'll all worship Jesus in taking them together. So band on your market set, go. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we, we are awed by you, that you would come and live on this earth, doing all that you did to demonstrate your love for us, culminating in the beating and carrying your cross to Golgotha, upon which you 
made the ultimate sacrifice, dying in our place for our sin and demonstrating your loyal love. You then rose from the dead, declaring to all that you are God. And we worship you. We praise you. And now we do as you commanded, as you instructed. We take these elements to worship you and to remember what you have done. We take this bread and this juice and we remember. Go ahead, church. Let's take the bread. Go ahead, church. Let's take the juice. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is good. Amen? Amen. Amen. I hope that this has been meaningful to you. I hope that you have sensed the, the power of the Lord at work in your midst. I hope that we leave this place and we can like see the ways in which he has done things on our behalf because our God is faithful and he is lovely. And so we worship together. Um, I thank you that you were patient with us and that you, none of you ran away. <laughs> so thanks for that. Um, speaking of not running away, for those of you who um, have enjoyed the decorations, I would ask for whoever can to stick around. We're going to have a little bit of soup, and then we're going to de-decorate this sanctuary so that it no longer looks like Christmas, but instead looks like it always has. So uh, for those of you who can join us, we'd love to have you. God bless you. You are dismissed. <laughs>